Good morning, brethren. Good morning. Good morning. I, a while back, had either heard or read Psalm 46 again and thought that I needed to look into that a little more closely because there was more there that I, than I couldn't see that I wanted to see. So that's what I'm going to speak about today. It's just Psalm 46. And as I was reading it, I was considering how it, in sections, kind of repeats itself again, but you can see different things from the way that it is that David was speaking about the different things. It says... To the chief musician for the sons of Korah, a song upon Alamoth, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake and the, with the swelling thereof. And here we can see how David presents the best message first. He presents how God is our refuge, he is our strength and our help, before he ever speaks of the things that would cause for us to need to rely on him for those, those specific things. When, this, when the circumstances arose where it talks about the earth being removed and the mountains being carried away in the midst of the sea and the waters troubling the earth and the mountains shaking, he, we can, um, hang on. When they arose, those who were the Lord's could rely on him to be their strength and their refuge. They didn't have to be concerned about the things that were going on during that time because they could rely upon the Lord. Amen. He helped them to not be overcome with fear, but to see him as he truly was, as their help. And he was not allowing... Um, this since this is about Korah, it's also that during all this time, the Israelites were fearful because of the things that were happening. To see the earth open up and swallow people is not something that would be very easy to watch. But those who were the Lord's were able to stand because they knew who their strength was. Amen. But it, they also saw him, God as who he was by not allowing the rebellion to go unchecked. Um, in the account, the Israelites fled in fear of being consumed, but it doesn't speak about Moses or Aaron or any that were with them fleeing from, the, from being around Korah and them. So they were able to stand knowing that the Lord had chosen them and that they were with him, and so that's where their strength would lie. And I was considering that as a believer, God is our refuge and our help when things come upon us. So there's no need to fear whatever comes because we are safe in the Lord when we are with him. Verses 4 and 5 say, There is a river that streams wherever shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High God. Sorry, of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. And again, we can see how God is for his people. He provides for them the comfort and the rest that they need in the midst of all the things that um, they need to be comforted and rested of. But he's also in the midst of them and sustaining them during these times. We shall not be moved because he provides everything that we need to be strong and faithful in his kingdom. And I like the phrase, God shall help them and right early. That shows the nature of the Lord and his, his forwardness to do good to his people. That it's not that, the, that when he remembers them off chance that he'll help them, that, it's, that he's forward to help them, that he desires to bless his people at the beginning of the need and at the first moment that there is a need. That's his desire. Um, then the next verse, verse 6 says, the, he, the heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, and the earth melted. And here's also another picture of what happened with Korah and how the earth was used in the judgment of the Lord. But it also shows how, the, how heaven counted Korah and those that were with him. They were heathen. And it, in considering that the, they were coming against God and the earth was used to hide their rebellion. Also seen here is what the Lord does to those who are against him. He uttered his voice, and the earth melted. It was immediate. There was nothing that would cause for a trial to be given or them to give their, uh, their side and for somebody else to give their side. The Lord immediately did this, this thing, and it also shows a picture of how his servants, those who are under him, the earth and the other people, how they immediately perform his will, that they don't have to be told to do it, and they have to go and do it later and think about it, but they immediately act for the Lord. And then verse 7 says, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. And again, we see David is praising the Lord for the things that he has done for his people. There is no concern for the godly as to what happens in the earth when we are with the Lord. He is doing all things well, and we can glory in him and how he is performing his will and his purpose. Verse 8 says, Come behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. And he considers again the works that the Lord has done with Korah, but then also takes it a step further and considers what the end will be. And I was considering, if you are found in the same state as Korah, what would your end be? And so that's also something that David is considering here. Um, but he's also considering what else the Lord has accomplished in his name. So in verses, verse 9 it says, He maketh wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the, the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. 
And again, we see the works of the Lord in the earthly aspects. He causes wars to cease, peace to reign, life to, to prosper and not death. He makes the fighting cease and causes the means of that fighting to not be needed anymore. And I was considering the connection with the end of the world where there will be no more war or cause for war, and there will be no more need for the use of war for the weapons that are used for war. And in Isaiah 2, 4, it says, And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And I was considering how that's a picture of what is spoken here in the Psalms and how whatever is against the Lord will not be, will not gain the victory or will not last because God is the ultimate victor and will no longer have any need for the things that are of this earth. And so we'll do away with it in the end. Verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. And here we can see again that the Lord is truly seen as he is. He was the ultimate victor in this circumstance with Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, but he was also um, seen by those who were, had accusations against him as, as who he truly was. There was none that withstood him or was able to say that he was not able to do those things which he had desired to do. And I was also concerned that there will be none that will be able to withhold from the Lord what is, what is his due. All will exalt him, even those who did not choose to do so in the earth. Korah will exalt him and say that he is God, and has done all things well whenever he is brought to give an account of the circumstance at that point as well. And I was also considering in the time of salvation how all who don't consider the Lord worthy of their praise or honor or time here will exalt him in the end. They will all give him what is due to the Lord's name, and there will be none that will be left out of the category of exalting the Lord. And then in verse 11 it says, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. And again, we can see how David proclaims the blessing of being one of the Lord's children, of the benefits that are realized because the Lord, because of the Lord, far outweigh the other considerations of being against, not with the Lord. There is comfort in knowing that the Lord is with us through whatever circumstance we find ourselves in because God is for his people. And he will do for them what is best and will give them what they need when they need it. And I was considering how through the whole psalm, David continues to, to bring up this point that he is that the Lord is a refuge, that he is a helper for his people, that he continues to bring this up because if you just consider the account of Korah and the, the way that the Israelites reacted and how it seemed to them, it would not have been a time for comfort. But for the Lord's people, it was a time of comfort for them because they knew that the Lord was with them and he wouldn't judge them in the same act of judging the others. So this, the Kind of in the same account with Noah that those would be saved who were the righteous and the just, and the unjust would be taken away during that act. And so I was also considering how the assurances that the Lord has left for his children are, are very great for us. These are assurances that have been left by David to consider some of the things of old. He has given us these things so we consider what he has done and what he will do. He has given us the considerations to help us on our way to glory, knowing that we need the assurance of his help, but also that he is forward and willing to, to help us and to, to grant us what we need so that we can overcome the world. And we know that we can't overcome the world by ourselves, but we know that with the king of glory we shall overcome the world because great is he, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. So that's what I have for this morning. And I will say a prayer for Brother Gene as he brings us our class this morning.